Just under eight hours, 6.30 tomorrow morning, if it's on time, the last ever mail train will come to a halt in Penzance Station. It'll mean the end of almost 170 years of postal history, as mail trains are finally phased out. Martin Geisler watched them sort some of the last post. They've been around for almost as long as the railways themselves, but while they're rich in romance and nostalgia, the Royal Mail's travelling post offices lack in efficiency these days. Tonight, the last of these rolling workshops will make its final journey. Tens of thousands of letters being sorted on the move in time for the morning post. This is the night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor, the shop at the corner of the girl next door, pulling up. This film charting the work of the train has captured the public's imagination in the 1930s. On board today, no shortage of happy memories among a crew who will all find themselves out of work tomorrow. It's the best job in the world. Best job I'll ever have. Worst day of my life when I finish tomorrow. For the staff who work on these trains, it's a tough, uncomfortable existence. But there is a real pride among the crew. These postmen will tell you they're the Royal Mail's elite. They can sort letters twice as fast as their depot-based colleagues, but, crucially, not as fast as the latest machinery. As from tomorrow, the hundreds of thousands of items these coaches carry each night will be moved by road or by air. The trains will be scrapped. For them and their workforce, this is the end of the line. Martin Geisler, ITV News, on board the Royal Mail's travelling post office. He's one of the more colourful ca foot and a half. That's now the maximum distance you're allowed to park from the curb before you could be fined by a traffic warden. It's all part of new traffic laws to clamp down on double parking and keep roads clear. It could mean some drivers might have to brush up on their skills, as Garen Vincent found out. Parking's never really been my strong points, but under the new legislation, I could be punished for that. If my car ends up more than 50 centimetres away from the curb, which in this case it has, I could be fined £100. So if you're not a great parker, start carrying your measuring tape. The idea is supposed to help make the traffic on our roads more free-flowing, but the prospect of traffic wardens on patrol with rulers does seem bound to get people's backs up. Let's uh, have a look at you. 40, about 45 centimetres, well, another five centimetres or so, and you'd have been in trouble. Know. What do you think about well, that? It just seems a bit crazy, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, out in the middle of the road, fair enough. 20 centimetres, you've done very well there, congratulations. But what do you Thank think you. of the new rule? Well, I think it's ludicrous. Um, it sounds like another one of those local councils and governments cashing in on, you know, just uh, the general public. You're miles away. I'm not even going to bother getting my tape out. I know, but I've got to deliver. So uh, what am I supposed to do if I can't park anywhere I got to park? The new measures are all part of the government's traffic management bill. Given the aggro they seem likely to cause, traffic wardens may soon be demanding some new kit. Tin helmets. Geraint Vincent, ITV News, Cardiff. I'll be back in a couple of minutes with a reminder of the headlines. First